I V M. What is a fitness trainer slash coach slash fitness entrepreneur slash an ex kettlebell athlete slash a procrastinator doing while hosting a podcast? Well, that is something which even I was thinking when IVM Productions reached out to me and asked if I wanted to host a podcast of my own. And then I realized, you know, I really have something to talk about. And the answer was a resounding no. But you know what? I really had a lot of things to learn. And what better way to learn new things than this particular platform? Raw and organic is nothing but just a series of conversations. with individuals who are inspiring in their own way now they might or might not be into fitness which is perfect because i want to know how these individuals have gotten to the point where they are right now and if at all fitness is one component that has helped them to reach over there why fitness it's something which i do professionally it's something which i have been doing since the last 8 years and it's something which has helped me meet like minded people and help me grow not only professionally but also personally so long story short drawn organic is an extension of me and this is us you and me trying to have conversations with people who are going to inspire us in the most natural way or raw and organic way and yeah today's guest is jyoti barut and jyoti is somebody who i have really looked up to she's a footballer she is you'll know her if you don't know jyoti you can just google her you can actually just check out her instagram page there's a spoiler you're talking in length in depth about her athletic career and she was looking forward for her football match which was going to happen over here the nationals and sadly It just so happened that she has enjoyed herself, and she's not going to play. Now, keeping that in mind, have a listen to this particular conversation. I think it's very insightful. It's beautiful. And once you're done, just message Jyoti and say, "Get well soon. See you." So, Jyoti, welcome to the show. Hi, Kunal, and thanks for having me. Excited to be here. No points for guessing why you are on my show. Not because uh, you are my best friend, <laughs> but but again, I, you are you are one of the best athletes which I know, and wow. you are being represented by the biggest brands in the country globally. In fact, so yeah, I am just going to like go straight to the questions, and I just want to have a like a normal conversations and get your brains on what's happening right now, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Beautiful. So speaking about the elephant in the country right now neera chopra he did an amazing 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 job and yeah. he is everywhere he is right there okay so tell me your thoughts about it how do you see the entire ecosystem changing how do you see the athlete life at the microscopic level per person changing over the entire country and what are your uh, observations about this entire phenomenon which is happening right now so see first and foremost you know neera chopra let's just let's just put it out there that he is he's a rarity like what he's achieved beside all the odds is insane and for someone to have you know it's a big thing just winning a gold in the olympics let alone winning it with the sort of sporting background that you get in india with uh in a sport that's not really right up there amongst sports that are backed in india so he's done like the impossible by winning a gold uh, in athletics um you know in india there's this huge disparity firstly there's the sport and then there's other stuff sport is anyway on a lower rung okay so there's business and and law and uh, doctors and everything's above sport okay so, so sport is automatically somehow in the minds of our public it's the last option it's the worst case scenario so if you don't do well in studies if you don't do well in anything else chalo fir aap sports khel lo that's the sort of sort of mindset that we we have right from like a school level the child who is like not doing well in academics not doing well in elocution or oh, sports may he'll be good and it's almost like a, you build this reputation almost like 
लोकल मीट्स इवन और इवन नेशनल इट्स वेल पे so there is some money in the sport so their kids are sent and coaching and very fancy coaching all this they are sent there then you come to the lowest rung of sports in in india which is your athletics. team sports athletics <laughs> athletics is right that's even below the team sports athletics <laughs> you know football hockey let's not talk about cricket at all because cricket is in a different it's not a sport Okay, then It's there's uh, <laughs> then there's other stuff like you got your wrestling and boxing and all that. So these sports are the last option. Like, so the people who are not doing well, no, don't have money. They will play these sports, and it's really sad because you know these are fantastic sport. Our national sport is hockey, uh, but yet people don't get into playing these sports. And even if you do, it's a struggle. Like it's. you almost you reach this like multiple points along the journey of why am i doing the everything agrees against me you know why the and, and so many people and that's why the sporting ecosystem is so warped because people keep dropping out every you know every few years because the road is so so difficult so our ecosystem is not thriving we don't from kids we don't go through you know get into sport training and then when you actually meant to be peaking as an athlete that's why you you know you're performing and you're playing for the country you're playing for your state whatever we drop out along the way only because there's just too many hurdles so that ecosystem is so messed up for sport so coming back to neeraj chopra he has literally done the impossible this is mission impossible that he's achieved and because he had you know some backing from you know bigger companies he managed and he got a solid coach and got things together for him but otherwise it's very very rare so does a normal layman who's walking on the road and who is like revering neeraj right now does that person know the entire scenario of the amount of effort that he had to do the massive achievement that he has had do you think they even know what he has gone through and what what he has achieved right now I honestly Kunal there is no way I there is no way that anybody including myself you know knows the struggle that Neeraj Chopra has been through to get where he's got the funding problems the just the issue of being in an, you know in a sport like athletics in India it's huge as he must have been for numerous meets uh, along his career where no one has given you know no one knows he's been there no one cares he's been he's been training he's gone for these meets no money he's drafted out worst journeys worst train rides he's been there come back tired on training diet god knows what it was like before he's you know he got to where he's got and the best part is now that he's got the gold medal he'll get all the back end all the back hmm. all the good food all the great training all the good uh, facilities and all that so but what's the now point he's a now Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually a very interesting conversation, right? Because when you think of Neeraj as an anomaly in this entire ecosystem that we're talking about right now, the Indian sporting ecosystem, we're also talking about different anomalies who have also won medals in this Olympic yeah. itself. Like there were like women who actually won. Uh, we were talking about it. PV Sindhu won. Uh, Meera Bai Chanu won, and actually yeah. she won in weightlifting, which is mind blowing honestly and she came a uh, silver if i'm not yeah. wrong um yeah. and then lovelina won and the hockey team did amazingly well there were like wrestlers who yeah. did amazingly well but is it just the idea of gold which is being fascinated by the indian people or just that people don't even realize like what's happening because from what i see from mm. where i see and this is like a true story right i was sitting at a bar 
Uh, mm. We were like having a beer and we were looking at, it was like 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m. And we were looking at Neeraj's javelin throw. And yeah. when he did his second throw, if I'm not wrong, and it was like the best throw of that particular mm-hmm. thing. And I knew and I started clapping. I was mm-hmm. the only one who was clapping in that entire bar and nobody could realize it. Okay? Mm. But only then once people realized after the news came out, after like people started posting about it, after everybody started talking about it, they started like realizing that, okay, wow, this is an amazing achievement because otherwise yeah. people had no idea. And we're talking about like real life people, right? They have no idea what, what was happening. They had no idea mm-hmm. that, okay, there was like javelin going on over there. So mm-hmm. why is this disparity amongst different sport and how much of a PR and uh, marketing, which actually plays a role in making an athlete, a super successful athlete and making mm-hmm. an athlete like a normal athlete who has to go through the same struggles even after winning all these gold medals, all these silver medals at world level and like national level and like even at Olympics. You know, I, sometimes I don't understand it, Kunal, because personally, I love watching athletics. I think it's the most interesting sport to watch as a viewer, you know, track and field. But somehow, I just don't feel like our Indian public enjoys watching athletics, which is strange. They don't like watching it. No one likes watching athletics. In fact, to find athletics on uh, TV during the Olympics, it yeah. was hard because they kept going back to like archery and, and uh, weightlifting maybe a little bit or like a uh, team sport. But athletics was Yahama they were showing in the middle. Whereas, I mean, I don't understand. Maybe it's not a glamorous sport. Maybe it doesn't have a fancy league that, you know. Exactly. And, and that is where I'm coming from also, right? I think glamour plays such an important part in an athlete's life these days in order to yeah. make that athlete a mainstream name. Yeah. Which is very sad, to be honest. But if an athlete isn't glamorous enough, I feel that the athlete's success levels are always going to be compromised because it's such a difficult thing to not be presentable. Mm-hmm. Uh, not be out there, not be well-spoken and yep. stay at a pedestal where people are going to look at you. So our media is always going to like look at different presentable individuals who are at the same level, right? So that is one observation which I had. And I might be mm-hmm. very, 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 very skewed at my observation, but this is something which I've realized that in order to make sure that you're making it, you also have to work so much on your soft skills. You have to work so much on different... 100%. Exactly. Different parts of your personality, right? And I think Neera did it really well. He did so, it yeah. well. Um, you know, he's he's what he's now like a, a poster boy in India almost. He had almost yeah. like this this uh, young Dhoni sort of look yeah. when he, when he uh, started off and then... You know, he's a likable character. He's not flamboyant. He's not a he's not a big talker. He's he's a quiet sort of guy. But he has uh, something nice about his personality that appeals to people. But let me tell you, if had he not won this gold, I don't think he would have appealed to people. So no one mm-hmm. would even care if he had not won this medal. We would Neera Chopra would not be a household name. And so that we come back to the the question of. Is he um, someone who's, who makes that good, that much of an impression that you would remember him even if he didn't win the medal? I don't think so. Plus, he's playing a sport that people are not really bothered about, athletics. Um, I don't think he would be uh, a, a poster boy in India if he had just, say, been to the Olympics, not won a medal. But no. the fact that he won the medal... Now people are looking more into his life. He's got a haircut. He looks nicer, you know, more presentable, I would say. He's getting interviews. So people are getting to know him better. He's well-spoken. So I feel that's, you know, the medal has changed everything for him. Yeah. So if it wasn't for the medal, it wouldn't have been for anything right now. I mean, like if because of the medal, he is where he is. And everything else is just an add-on. And exactly. that, is, that is such an amazing point, I think. But nonetheless, keeping that in mind, has the perception of the masses changed in terms of uh, looking at sport in a different light altogether? Do you think people are going to look at Indian athletes in a different light or like, oh, wow, that person seems inspirational. That person seems 
uh, attractive, that person seems to be at a different level altogether. And like, I want to be like that person. Because when you see American athletes, for example, when you see American sprinters, I remember watching Justin Gatlin uh, mm. way back. When I saw him, I'm like, dude, I, I really want to have the personality that this guy has. Okay, when you see American women sprinting, you see like, wow, the, the amount of, uh, the, the entire attire that they have is just yeah, yeah. so flamboyant. And it's, it's like making a statement every single time, right? So it's inspirational yeah. at the same time. You think Indians are actually going to start looking at the sport from that lens whenever they are going to look at the sport or it's this one anomaly which we are witnessing in a very, very, very long time. You know, um, it's disappointing to say, but I think it's an anomaly. Um, I think stuff like the Olympics is very short-lived in our brains. Soon after that, now we've gone back to IPL, cricket, some upcoming India tour. You know, it's any success in, in any other sport, especially these sports that are not, you know, popular sports in India, it's very short-lived. In another six months, Right now, there may be a craze. Everyone may be like, oh, chucking a javelin and all this. Or like, athletics, let's try athletics. But is it going to last? I don't think so. And the problem there is there is no sustained media coverage. So I if we it's... saw Neera Chopra perform at all the upcoming meets that are coming up, he's going for, uh, you know, the various, the golden circle and all that stuff, circuit and all that stuff. If, we get, if the public gets to see him in all those meets, maybe then. But... Now and the next time we'll see Neera Chopra, next Olympics, if he's there, or next Commonwealth Games. So there's, people forget about him. If we see Virat Kohli play once in two years, are we going to really remember who he is? Yeah. You know? And one day, one yeah. day, for one match. One day for see, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. that's a huge thing. The, you sit in the minds of the public. If they see you, if they see you struggle, if they are living that journey with you, you know, fans live the cricket journey with the team. They know up now they're going to play here, then they're going to play there, then they have their favorites. Oh, this guy's going to play with Mumbai Indians. This one's going to play. So they follow them. They follow their lives. They live vicariously. We can't live vicariously through Neera Chopra because he's off the radar now. We'll see him hmm, tada, for next, next uh, you know, Commonwealth Games. So, it's sad. Exactly. And you won't even see uh, athletes, including Neeraj, training as much also. Because after a point, it's not trending anymore. And yeah. And yeah, God forbid he have a bad meet. Okay. Like he has one meet where he say doesn't perform. Bas khatam. <laughs> then we won't know where he's going next. <laughs> what he's planning to do. Off the grid. But you know, like as much as it sounds pretty dark to be honest, but I still think that there is like a massive hope in terms of like having a lot more exposure to different kinds of sports. I mean, of course, mm. there has been like some kind of uh, spotlight at one particular sport that a lot of people had no idea about, mm -hmm. but there was a spotlight. Yeah. But including that, uh, there is going to be some kind of spotlight in golf. There is going yeah. to be some kind of spotlight in badminton. And over the period of time, I think there is going to be an upward trend in like people embracing sport as a part of something that is, that they look up to and they, they mm. look forward to because athletes really go through a lot, man. And I think uh, a poster boy like an Olympian gold medalist like Neena Chopra, he, he basically has the mantle right now to make sure that a lot of people are taking inspiration from him. Because a lot yeah. of young people, including myself, are like, Achha, okay, dude, like, if this guy can actually do this, there's so many yeah. other people who can actually do this, right? Because you see this guy training, you see this guy like giving it all. And then you realize that, oh, wow, algorithm also suggests you different kind of athletes at the same time. And then you look at their profile and then you look at yeah. their profile and the other profile. And then it makes you realize that, okay, TK, you know what? This, there are a lot of other people, there are a lot of other players. I was the one who was like blinded. I was the mm -hmm. one who was like not aware. So mm -hmm. I think eventually this is going to happen. Of course, it's always going to come from a very, very, very different part yeah. or different idea. But then it's going to evolve into something which is going to be much better. At least I'm being more optimistic about it. So yeah, hopefully, that's, hopefully you can all. 
I would love to see a change and, you know, a minor shift in the interest of our, our nation into being interested in other sport, you know, pushing kids into playing sport that may not necessarily be glamorous sports. And for kids to make that decision to play sports based on only what appeals to them and not what is will be financially better for them. So there's only kids who may they may love athletics and that may be their first pick, but then they are ushered into nay athletics choro. So I mean people need to play what they want to play. Yeah man, uh, like interesting times though. I don't think it's going to happen immediately, but whenever that happens, hmm. it will happen. I I really hope that we survive long enough to actually see that. I really but hope so. One thing immediately that is going to happen is going to take a small break. Then we are going to come back and we are going to actually speak to Jyoti about her future plans because I think she's doing a lot of other things and about her athletic career. So stay tuned and see you in a bit. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Cyrus Says, Cyrus is joined by Ganesh Ramani, the Managing Director at Mars Pet Care India. They discuss pet ownership and pet homelessness and an AI-driven pet loss and found app. We welcome another new show to our network, Ikka Dukha Economy, with Abhinav Trivedi. In the first episode of the Hindi language show, Abhinav speaks to Dr. Bharat Junjunwala about fiscal deficit and its effects on our daily lives. Tune in to new episodes every Tuesday. On all things policy, the folks from Takshashila Institute discuss the lack of support for India's police personnel. On Terde Mere Rase, Keshav introduces us to Chandrabhaga Beach. On The Wire Talks, Anushka Jain, lawyer and policy researcher, talks to Siddharth. They discuss the dangers of facial recognition and why her organization started the campaign, Ban the Scan. And on Marathi Kirkiton, Dr. Rajiv and Manik Deshmukh explore the evergreen poetry of the late poet Mangesh Patgaonkar. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Also do remember, go check out our website, ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube to get a list of all of our YouTube channels. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors on the network this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, HDFC Mutual Fund, Coinswitch, Kuber, Intel, and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back. Jyoti, it was an amazing conversation. We spoke in length about Neera Chopra like everybody else in this country. And uh, I think it was an important conversation. I really hope that a lot of people start looking at different sports altogether. Uh, one recommendation of sport that you really think is something that you love to watch. For me, it's weightlifting. For you? For me, athletics, track more so. Track and maybe swimming. Swimming, dude. Swimming. Like yeah. 800 meter swimming, remember? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Those people are built of something else. Yes. And even water polo. I think water polo is oh. such, such a difficult sport. It's one of the most difficult sport. I there is a YouTube video. I fathom how people do, how people play that sport. It's impossible. You know, there is a YouTube video uh, where they show the American women's water polo team uh, hmm. training. And hmm. they were showing us that you have to stay afloat all the time. And in yeah. order to stay afloat all the time, they have to keep pedaling their feet throughout yeah. the entire game because otherwise they'll just sink, right? Sink. So they have to keep pedaling, keep pedaling and they have to create enough power to thrust their body up and get the entire uh, ball at the same time, go down, pedal again, make sure that they're finding enough grip. And I don't then know how swim they do up that. And down. Swim up and down with the ball and throw it. It's it next is. level how difficult it is. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Impossible, yeah. honestly. But you look at them and they're built like beasts. Oh. Beast. They're, they're beautiful, beautiful humans. But speaking of athletes, tell me one thing. What is the athlete life in India, dude? I mean, the normal life of mm. a person in India is 10 standard tuck, padhai, college. Baad mein college ke baad, aap jo bhi degree loge wo, then you mm. get a job, milti hai. Aap job karo, ya to aap business karo, ya to aap startup chalo mm. karo, uske baad aap retirement mm. le lo. Oh, yeah. So like it's it's something which is like very streamlined and it's it's yeah. more believed in and it's something that a lot of people end up doing, right? Because that was my yeah. game plan also. Yeah. What is the athlete life? The athlete life is start off in school. Um, don't do too well in school. 
take to spot <laughs> then <laughs> then you're just but going around the place okay then you're looking for uh, training centers then you find something that works for you then hopefully you make it to your national team then it's struggle because you're not going to get good facilities you're not going to get paid so you got to do something on the side then you play for your state hopefully you get spotted by someone from the national team uh, scouts hopefully you get called to a national team sort of camp and if you make it to that uh, camp hopefully you get selected to play for india your tournaments are very erratic for most sports at least or i can talk for to you in you know in terms of football uh, sometimes you'll have months and months of nothing then suddenly you'll have months of back to back tournaments so you got to do something else in between otherwise you just can't sustain yourself and then yeah your your life as a sportsman is very limited because the you know there are younger athletes coming up all the time fitter younger they got that you know that sort of never they just don't get tired so and then, and as you i feel like in india your athlete life is even more limited because your your life is hard like you have to struggle so much it's not comfortable you're not getting the best diet uh, so it's that's limiting in your in your uh, sporting your life span so by the quick turnover is quick your life is over as an athlete you get replaced by someone and then these athletes usually maybe apply for get a government job through their sport get posted depending on the sport so if you're playing a good sport you get posted to a good area in the railways or something if you're playing a sidey sport you get posted to some sidey area in the country for railways or the other option is if you want to be a little more enterprising you open your own academy so that is the kind of route that most sports people in india take pop <laughs> rain yeah and then we are talking about like a, why don't the lot of people take up sport right <laughs> uh, this was the climax guys this was this is not a happy ending for a movie <laughs> no but like this is such a i won't even call it i don't know what to call it exactly but i i feel that this is people who play sport not only they have to go through a lot of uh physical stress not only they have mm. to go through a lot of physical training physical hardships physical workout uh, physical like they have to build their physical toughness over the period of time they also have to build their mental toughness i think that is everything Because, <laughs> yes yeah right and like every single day when they wake up they have to first fight the anxiety of wanting to feel better about themselves when they are in where they're always surrounded by competition that they're mm. always surrounded by judgments we are they're always surrounded by people who are always going to uh either push them down or put them up and if they put them up that's always going to be such small momentary achievement that because yeah. you know that somebody else is going to come in and it's also so short lived so it's for so athletes it's, it's so difficult man i can't even imagine how difficult it can be but you said that something about like sustaining themselves while not doing actively or competing yeah. actively right so how yeah. how to i don't know about a lot of other people um they might get a lot of job, uh, government jobs and stuff like that but you yeah. i know are into fitness yeah and, and, so and i need to you know train um, beside my football as a personal trainer because the football season is very erratic you know um so i can't be sitting idle for months on end the money we kind of make through football is pittance you cannot survive on that so you got to do something else and you know lucky for me i've gotten to a line that is that I enjoy, i enjoy and also keeps me fit so it sort of goes in somewhat uh, a hand in hand sort of way with my sport but um, yeah like i can't imagine someone who's working in a completely different field and then sort of has to come back and get into that sporting mindset because it's it's very hard and i don't know how sustainable that would be but they do that they do that but it do I mean, that kudos yeah. to them yeah kudos yeah. to them speaking in length about the fitness industry for you um yeah. would you would you recommend other people to join in fitness industry if they are also pursuing uh, athletics being into sports yeah 100% i think uh, especially as a personal trainer especially nowadays because of the whole online 
uh, seen and you can have you know online clients and stuff i think it's a great alternative sort of um, career to have going side by side with your sport because number one uh, it's something that can, can be done from anywhere you can even carry on working while you're at a camp say um and secondly i think as an athlete you can sort of do some sort of transfer of knowledge, knowledge. in terms of training especially if you're doing a sport that is you know a little more endurance based and you could correlate that to someone's you know regular training as well so at that helps because you've got the experience first hand experience you know and you 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 do a lot of you know off field workouts work uh, workouts as well so that helps and i think they are very closely linked yeah and i i personally believe that a lot of people would look up to an athlete yeah giving them knowledge because yeah. it's fascinating right to actually because i think fitness yeah of course and that is very important uh, that is my way yeah. of like selling my services for athlete yeah like just just saying that you know what oh i've played for india and yeah. uh, this is what my training has been and now i am ready to give out my knowledge to some yeah. of you guys so if you guys want to some uh, take some kind of like training from me i'm happy to help and these are my certifications yeah. because i think that is very important and these are yeah, my yeah, certifications so hmm. so please uh, if you guys are looking for just reach out to me and i think the amount of people that are going to reach out to an athlete turned coach is going to be yeah. massive right because it a is, lot of people want inspiration they so, want inspiration i also feel like a lot of uh people who maybe were into sport at one stage uh and then sort of dropped along the way or people who are just inspired by sportsmen they have this thing of like i want to train like a like a real athlete i want to train like a like a sportsman and then when they do get to like train with someone who's played a sport or has trained in a certain way it it somehow you know they feel good about it and they feel like they're training uh like a sportsman would if they were playing professional sport I think that I get that cues. a lot. Like, yeah, like I want to, exactly. I want to train. Like, how did you train when you play football? I want to train that hard, which is nice that people want to experience that and all. But it's good for of for course. people to get yeah into training for sure. And also, like, I think athlete turned coaches are also like phenomenal coaches because it's also like mental conversations that you guys have with yourself in yeah. order to like pump yourself up. or in order to uh, just like make sure that you're putting the best version of yourself forward uh, right. those are the conversations that you can actually like share with your clients mm. also and i think and uh, that is and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly and that is that yeah. is such a rare thing to do right because a lot of people can not do that a lot of coaches a lot of fitness instructors cannot do that but athletes can do that so i agree that's that so if you are somebody who is an athlete and a very about what you can do i mm. figure that jyoti a uh, highly recommends and even i for that matter highly recommend that you actually try and venture into fitness as an industry because i think fitness industry one thing is has low barrier for entry so if yep. you just do a couple of certifications which i really uh, suggest that you should do and it's please not that do. expensive either yes please mm. do so you guys know what you're talking about and because it's online and if you have a decent enough of decent amount of presence i think you guys are going to like blow up in this industry because a lot of people every single one including myself and people who are listening right now would want some kind of uh, knowledge and some kind of experience that you guys will have to share so please do that because you are doing an amazing job being an athlete but at the same time i feel that you have to be smart about it also and you have to make sure that you're looking out for your future also so yeah. that's that jyoti one last question yes what are your future plans are you opening up in the academy you know kunal i realized <laughs> quite early on in my playing career that i would not be a good uh, <laughs> skill coach mhm um because i feel like my footballing skill is very it's not learned i never had any formal coaching i've never honestly at least in my formative years or yeah i would say even till till i actually played for the country i have never had formal training i don't understand what formal training is my footballing whatever i can do with my footballing skills is very inherent and i find it very hard to 
teach something that I have not been taught. And which is why for me, getting into skill-based training or being like a football coach, it's just out of the question for me. Would I get into something that is like, you know, strength and conditioning for, for sportsmen or teams? Uh, for sure, that's something that I could look at uh, going ahead. But uh, most upcoming for me is the, our nationals have been announced. So I have a football mm-hmm. tournament coming up after like a good two years of, uh, you know, lockdown, COVID and all that. And I have to say, I was 30 when I last played nationals, now I'm 32. And I can feel <laughs> the two years. Oh They've just God. gone by, but you feel it yeah. on the field. Or maybe I'm just taking a little while to get used to it again. But, you know, it's hot and we're training like crazy. And it's really, it's pulling the body down. You really feel it, especially after this break. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. It's a huge mental sort of thing for me right now to be training at this level, uh, pushing myself. But uh, let's see how that goes. It's coming up in November. And yeah, hopefully... We'll have a league next year. Hopefully with COVID easing out a little bit, maybe tournaments will resume and footballing life will resume as well. And Jyoti, if there is one person who I know who can actually like kill it and look beautiful while killing it, it's you. Uh, so of course, it's it's two years of like just doing normal workouts. So it's yeah. always, your body is always going to be in a very different mindset. <laughs> body set mindset altogether it's in a different <laughs> zone yes, zone altogether but but yeah. it's something that you can always handle it's something that you will always uh, come back with because you have been doing and you're so good at it so mm. don't worry dude uh, just some more practice and i'm more pretty practice. sure that your competition is going to feel the same <laughs> yeah true everyone everyone's struggling everyone's you know suddenly like shit we haven't been eating enough i almost sometimes feel kunal that like my HIT is just not transferring onto the field. It in won't, right? I think running is a totally different ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you got to run, you got to run, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. A lot of people well, do there. think. Hmm. A lot of people do think that HIT is going to like have like a massive uh, transfer on field. But no. Nah. <laughs> nah, I can nah. give that to like, in writing. Yes. <laughs> um, no. 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 Yes. Like, HRT is like at a pedestal right now. They should <laughs> realize that, uh uh-uh. like, uh, you, if you have to like run faster, you have to start running faster. Yeah. yeah <laughs> All yeah, these yeah. things are like supplements. <laughs> yeah. But, but nonetheless, no Jyoti, burpees we, are going to make you a better runner. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't do burpees on a football field. <laughs> when you're right? running. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, Jyoti, I really feel that you are and because I know you personally and because I have been meeting you since the last two years and a part of the reason why you are at this particular fitness level. <laughs> uh, <Is you>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the crows was that uh, you order. But uh, <laughs> because I have known you and because I know you, I know that you will always take the best version of yourself out on the field. So make sure that you are careful. Make sure that you are giving your hundred percent because yeah. you, you are an inspiration to thousands, man, thousands. So Thanks, all the best, Jyoti. All right. Yes, yeah. you are. And uh, how do we reach out to you, Jyoti? You can reach out to me on my Instagram handle, jbarrett10. jbarrett10. And yep. uh, also one last question. Um, do you always fake being the quieter one in the party? <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. Neither am I going to affirm that. But, uh, that's to be seen at a party. No, yes. for sure. uh, guys, for those of you who have no idea what you're talking about, it's basically some kind of context uh, for you guys. Uh, it's basically Jyoti always has this amazing calming personality or this calming mask on that always intrigues people. So everybody comes and like talks to her because they just want to like, you know, like peel the layers of this particular complex person, <laughs> this mysterious person and which I know <laughs> is a sham. Kunal, <laughs> it is not a scam. Oh my God. 
<laughs> Thank you. Complex human being. Like an onion. <laughs> onion, right. <laughs> 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 okay thank you All so right. much jyoti thank you so much thanks kunal thanks armi yeah it's a fun conversation thanks so much yes thank you see you guys and if you guys have any questions for jyoti or myself just let us know you can actually dm us my instagram handle is @rate_subtle.strength jyoti's instagram handle is jbarit10 and welcome to the first episode of rohan organic i really hope that you guys enjoyed it and looking forward to speak to a lot more inspiring and interesting people in the most rohan organic way possible so thank you see you are you looking for finance products and services that can enhance your personal finance experience Are you looking for a space to talk about your financial product or service? And are you looking for a crisp talk show where the conversation is all about money? Well, your search ends here. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta and I'm host of the Paisa Paisa podcast and I invite you for the conversation about your personal finance on each Monday on the IVM podcast app or the website or on any podcast streaming platforms. See you folks. A wise man once said, "Traveling, it makes you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller." Well, listen to such travel stories and experiences exploring India on the Musafir Stories with us, Saif and Faiza. Catch us on the IBM website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from.